Um, let's see. And uh, Aaron, do I have control over the uh, PowerPoint? Are you pushing the slides or? I can flip them for you. That's that's probably easier. Oh, okay. If, if that's what you have, and, and I'm going to want to go off, you know, I'm going to do a little demo here and there. So sometimes we'll need to share screen. Yeah, I'll stop sharing then and you can share then if that's easier. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that sounds good. All right. So um, for, and how about in the, in the chat, uh, if you don't mind. So it's just getting to uh, know how many people are really familiar with um, Merlot, the, you know, they drink it every night and then play with it during, you know, during the day. Um, so I just want to, because my my goal here was to just present a little bit of an overview uh, for those who uh, may not be familiar with all the capabilities that are available for you. So um, so if you don't mind, just pop it in the chat um, if there's a comments that you have or yes, I'm familiar, just so I get a little sense uh, from folks here while I'm you know starting to talk. Okay, um, all right. Uh, thank you, Morgan, and uh, and Leslie. Okay, um, okay. So we got vaguely familiar, really familiar, reasonably familiar, pretty familiar. All right, becoming more familiar, Elaine. That's great, uh, Krista. All right, somewhat familiar. Okay, Suzanne. Wonderful. Um, so so now I know kind of a little bit how, how to how to pace this. All right. So the the first thing. One of the things about open openness, open education, you, you're going to hear a lot of different lang, you know, terms being thrown around, and and I think all the things that you need to be successful as an ALS coordinator, um, and and what what I want to begin with, and and uh, okay, so um, Aaron, if you want to hit hit the next button there, because there's a little animation on this slide, okay, so so the metaphor here is cooking and education. And education is crazy, messy, complex, stuff like that. But we've all done cooking. So leveraging as a metaphor, our knowledge about cooking and how we can use that metaphor to understand what we're trying to do here and, and the resources that we can help bring to you. So when we cook, we all need ingredients. So hit the next button. And we have stuff we might grow in our garden. We create our own and stuff. We go buy butter in the store, right? And so, and this is the thing about when we're in education, the analogy is the next button, open education resources, right? And these are things like Merlot has a place, think of it like your pantry, you can go shopping and find stuff, pull off the shelf. But you also in your own, your own faculty are creating things all the time too as well. And so bringing that mixture of things that faculty create and you can reuse from other people, all right? Those are the ingredients. But you need more than just the ingredients to prepare a meal, right? Or to deliver an, an instructional experience. So you need the next button. You need recipes about how to mix and organize and present those ingredients, the know-how. And so hit the next button. So it's what's in your head and your ability to really put these ideas into practice, okay? And so next button, and that is open educational practices. And, and the faculty showcases that L Leslie is asking you to put together is about how your faculty are practicing the uses and the benefits of open education resources. So to prepare that meal and to help scale this up so you get more people using open education resources, they got to have the ingredients and they have to have, in a sense, the recipes to make that happen. And, and with that, then you can say, oh, now I'm all ready. But next button, recipes and ingredients without a kitchen, you know, the technologies and the tools to enable to bring those practices and implement them to produce the actual outcome. If you don't have the kitchen, you're going to have some problems, right? You, you'll, you won't be able to deliver on all those savings that you can provide your students. So the next button, right? So we have, you know, we got stoves, we got tools to do this, utensils, and next button. So when we refer to those, these are some of the open educational services, the technologies that are available. 
So what I'm going to do in the overview of what we have in Merlot, and I'm going to do a few screenshots here and there, mostly for those who are really familiar to highlight these things, and then also maybe do a little um, examples, a live demo of some of the resources that, that we have to highlight the, these different elements here. Okay, so I, I hope that was a, a useful metaphor um, to help people um, get the hang of um, all the different elements that you have to bring together for the um, for a good um, ALS strategy. All right, so uh, next button. Okay, so just a reminder from Merlot. All right, so again, next. Free and Open, CSU has been the leader in this since 1997. Okay, next. And we now, we've we've hit 100, over 100,000 materials that we have in Merlot. And I'm getting noises here. Um, next, and... And we also just hit over 200,000 re registered members from around Merlot, uh, from around the world. And, and this is an important element um, that, and, and Leslie brought up a, an important description of Merlot, it's a referatory. It's a catalog of resources that are stored on the web around the world. Some of them are stored within Merlot, but most of them are just referred to. And so in a sense, the world is your oyster of the library of online materials, but if you don't have a catalog to discover that for people to write comments on, that's what we really provide for you. And, and that's something that's growing on a regular basis. Merlot has about three to 400 new materials added to its collection every month. And who does that? It's the members of the community. So it's a communities and the plural S, is really possessive, that it's your community that you can build that collection for you. So next, okay, and you can, people often know it's at merlot.org. All right, so next stuff, all right, so here's the, for those who are not familiar, here's the, the, uh, the homepage, and think of it like a Google search, okay, uh, where you can just type in uh, a key point, and let's see, we got someone in the, in the chat, uh, and and how about um, uh, Aaron? If, if if you can just interrupt me um, too about uh, if there's questions in the chat. So is okay. there thing about quality assurance um, provided by materials of Merlot? And if so, can you send this information along and point me out, you know, where I can find it? Okay. So let's um, so let, let's hit the next button, um, Aaron. All right, so uh, so I, and I, um, I'm trying to guess, I, I, I probably typed in DNA um, into Merlot, and so I get a hit list of materials, and, and if it's about DNA, so we have 763 materials. Now, um, see, I, I can't quite see in my chat who, who sent the message about quality assurance. So one of the things you can see on those, those little panels that talk about these resources, Merlot has 24 editorial boards of subject matter experts, faculty in the, in the field that go through a peer review like we do in our scholarship, a peer review evaluation of materials within the Merlot collection. Now we also have, you also see on the DNA from the beginning, user ratings. So the community who are members of Merlot also can add their thoughts. And sometimes members of Merlot are just not faculty, but they're also students, they're librarians. Um, they can be uh, instructional designers, content developers. There's all types of people who can share their expertise uh, along uh, what they have found most useful about, about these things, okay? So quality assurance, we do it with editorial boards that provide you a review about the, 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 the one, the first part is in a sense qualities around the, um, the quality of the, the academic content, the accuracy, if you wanna put it that way, of the academic content. The next element that's part of the peer review is it's pedagogical effectiveness. Has the technology been designed 
to lead to learning outcomes, okay? So how do you get a resource to be re reviewed by the editorial board? The editorial board, Thomas, they actually continuously review the collection. They see what's coming in. The editor, the way the process works, each editorial board has an editor and really decides, are these of sufficient quality to be, to be uh, get value from a, a more intensive review process? So um, there's no payment to make it happen. It's really about the editor and then the editorial board members kind of look at the initial quality and when things are really good, what they want to do is highlight that with this additional review of the material. So, so it is communities of faculty members looking at what's coming in, and then they say, yep, let's put this into our queue for doing uh, peer review. And peer reviews are done by two faculty on the editorial board, like we often have in our scholarship, and then those reviews are integrated by the editor, and then we actually post the, the reviews itself. So Tom, was that helpful there for you? Yes, thank you. Okay, and whoever asked the other question about quality, um, are you, did, did I answer your question there too? You did, thanks Jerry, it's Elaine. Oh, oh Elaine, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, great. All right. Um, all right, let's let's go to next slide. All right. Um, now, one of the things uh, I'll say about Merlot too. So this is an example. So hit the next slide. Um, when when you do a search in Merlot, um, you find out what's in our collection. And I think I put th this one is I put blood pressure in here, right? Now, um, and, and when you when you click on when when then you hit the search. Notice on the left-hand side, it gives you all these type of different disciplines in which those materials are, are found in here. So, um, so th these are some of the things about the collection of Merlot when you're looking for things that it gives you the disciplinary context for those issues, for those topics, all right? Now, certainly, and, and that can help then you narrow down exactly what you're looking for. Now, one of the things about Merlot is, of course, we don't have it all. We have 100,000, but guess what? There's, there's literally millions of resources around the world that are available to you. Next, it, hit the next button, All right. So here's the, you know, assessing um, peer rev uh, a blood pressure, uh, next button. And you can see this one has peer reviews and user ratings. And, uh, and these are all, you can resort all that, your hit list here by, you know, what's the newest thing that come out if you wanna look at that. But we have also have overall ratings so you can get the good stuff floating up to the top of the hit list. Now, the other thing we have other libraries. Merlot searches 80 other open libraries that are managed by lots of other organizations. So if you hit the next button, Okay, so here's an example where um, on the left-hand side, we, where you see kind of the blue bar over the Digital Public Library of America, right? So these are all the libraries that you have there. You can scroll down. You got MIT OpenCourseWare. You have Lumen Learning, Curriki. You got um, OER Commons. If you're into physics, you got Compadre. So, so you can choose you're a particular library that you might be looking for and click on this and bingo, here are the materials about blood pressure that's in the digital public library, all available for you to use. And you can click on to get more information or go to the material. So when, when people talk about, um, I can't find materials, then I try to say politely, that you probably haven't looked for materials through Merlot because what we have in the Merlot collection and we have 80 other open libraries that can provide you access to materials. And then the other aspect, the other little bar that there is on the web. And, and that's where we actually look at the entire web. We have a 
custom Google search application that enables you to find educationally related material. And some of you probably heard me say this, so I apologize for being redundant, but if you typed in DNA into Google, you'll get 23andMe and the paternity suit from the latest Hollywood star. But if you typed in DNA and hit Merlot's global um, web application, you'll get research resources from the Cold Spring Harbor National Lab on genetics that has websites that have simulations for over 75 little simulations about genetics. And that's the number one item. So, so these tools can really help you deal with the, I can't find it. What often happened, it's gonna be, wow, there's a lot of stuff here. How do I choose which ones I use? And that's where Merlot's collection, because we do reviews, I think can really help get down to the stuff that might be most useful for your faculty. Okay, uh, next slide. All right, try, ne next one there, Aaron. Okay, great. Um, also, you know, when COVID hit, and, and I'll say the other aspect around when you need to make um, materials more engaging and interactive, simulations are an important strategy. And again, simulations are where the students are setting up the circumstances for virtual experiments, and then they can discover the outcome when they make choices of ideas or hypotheses they want to test and sees what happened by these intelligent engines. So Merlot's virtual labs are here, um, and, and those are all part of the collection that's available. We kind of create a highlight little portal about that. Next. All right, so, so now we're getting into the issue of practices. Um, you have all this content, right? The ingredients that you have. Now, how do faculty use these things? And, and the, as I mentioned before, uh, next slide. This is where your showcases, where your faculty are explaining their courses, their content, and their strategies for bringing free and open and low cost materials that make a difference for your students. So this is another resource. Um, think of this as your recipe book, right? For pedagogical practices that are open and free for you to use, right? So oep.merlot.org. And just to give you some, and, and we have, there's lots of different practices, just so you know in here, we have a whole section about affordable learning, which is using open, free and open and low cost materials. But we also have practices around redesigning courses, flipping the classroom, using supplemental instruction, um, a whole variety of ways using OER, you can do those type of things, as well as other, other um, elements, other practices that, that are out there. And in this whole collection, we, pro we probably have over a thousand e-portfolios of or showcases of faculty telling their stories. So just want to make sure the folks know about those two as well. Um, we also have just, this was just recently put in, um, is a, um, a whole section about large scale OER strategies. And um, that, that, um, that can provide you a lots of, I'll say guidance about how you on your campus might want to think of various organizational parameters in your program, not just about the content, the OER, um, and, and the faculty professional development. How do you build leadership's buy-in? So there's a lot of good information about that stuff. It's called large-scale implementation. Okay, uh, next slide. And so here's an example. Um, what, what, what we have, and in the Cool for Ed, you got lots of these, and this is what you're building this inventory or library of faculty stories. And so this is something, uh, Boss Grammy from um, Bakersfield. Here's the book, uh, next slide. And if you click on the blue bar, learn how I used it, then this is an early version of the Cool for Ed e-portfolios here, all right? And, and as Leslie said and Aaron said, 
These were designed with scaffolding questions where the faculty just have to look at what's in the tool and they just have to answer the questions, fill it in. And if they can, if they can create a Word document, they can create a faculty showcase. Okay. Let's see, as, as faculty, Elaine puts in, as a faculty try to incorporate more OE, OEP into their courses, will there be a section for student engagement in OEP? Ah, Elaine, that's a great idea, right? So, and, and just, you know, this is how Merlot functions, is the community says, what about da-da-da-da-da? And so um, if, if, if there are showcases that are going to focus on student engagement, then it's really easy to be go into a website, say, okay, let's create another page and let's showcase faculty's student engagement section. So um, uh, Elaine, you know, uh, and, and Leslie, that, you know, this might be something particularly about not only has, does open education enable affordability, but it also is an important mechanism by having open pedagogies, the opening the pedagogy to student engagement, to student participation, to student leadership, and then we can create, you know, a collection of those two as well. All right, excellent. Student, Thank you, Elaine. And student equity. Oh, and yes, definitely. Right. So, so you you can, you know, these are things that that why technology is easy. It's easy to build a virtual another bookshelf in a virtual library versus trying to put a physical one in can be a real pain, but virtual, adding a wing to the virtual library, it's pretty easy, okay? And, um, and that's what I'm here to help, continue to help what you're doing here to highlight and showcase the expertise that you're bringing and the change you can make. All right, next. All right, um, and I'm looking at the time. I'm gonna do some real quick, you still need a kitchen. And so um, next, hit the next button. And so Merlot has some easy to use tools. Um, and what, what I do, maybe just I'll, I'll for you to cook up your open ingredients. So now, um, uh, um, Aaron, if you don't mind uh, me sharing the screen real quick. Thank you. And uh, let me, all right, okay. Um, and let me just make this a little so we can see this. I don't need so big, so small. Okay, I got up there. All right. Now, one of the things that um, that's in Merlot that you know I talked. We just talked about creating a bookshelf, you know, for uh, equity and and ALS and student engagement and OER, right? So so those are kind of organizational changes that we collectively make as a, as a community. But now what you can do. Hey, Jerry, they can't see the screen. Yep, uh, that's what I'm putting okay. on right now. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So, so when you're a member of Merlot, let me just, all right, let me just go back here a sec. All right, so when you sign up, all right, you have all these, these are in a sense, your kitchen here, of what are the tools that are available for you to use. And one of them is about creating your own personal libraries, your own personal bookshelves. So here are some things where, um, and, and the, these are um, what you can do in Merlot, you find materials that you like and you can create, and uh, th these are bookshelves. And this is one on ICT literacy that I actually copied from uh, Leslie Farmer, who's a member in your teacher ed program, who is the editor of ICT Literacy. So you can see in my profile, I have these this collection of ICT literacy materials that are found in Merlot. And what's really nice about this is you can then share these with your students, right? And they can become members of Merlot and, and they can say they can come to this, this web page because that's a stable URL. You can just pop that into your LMS. And if, and if they say, oh, I like this stuff, they could just click on this button and then they can make a copy of it and put it into theirs. And then they have it to use and edit to do all the things that they want. So you can create your own personal curated OER collections share them with your students. 
your students can then curate and add and then share back with you those type of resources that they find most useful. So this is a tool that, that in a sense is part of your kitchen where you can bring in some ingredients and make some comments about them, but then cook them up to allow other people to use and participate. The other thing that uh, just to highlight real quick, because I also want to get into another collection that we have is Merlot has an authoring tool for you to be able to create open education resources. Now, if you remember the five R's for OER is I can reuse it and then I can remix it is often the second one. And remixing is about how can I take in a bunch of different ingredients and then put them together in a way, put it in a scope and sequence that's new. So I may not change what, what, what other people have done, but I just create a different organization and curation. And, and what we have in Merlot is a tool that if it's if you can really, in a sense, create a uh, use a Word document, you can know how to fill out um, and create your own web page. And this is how your e-portfolios um, or your showcases are created. So, uh, and, and this is, I'm not sure if, the, if this is the same one that, that you're using right now, but you can just, we have different templates for you to create things. You can type it, whatever you want to name it. And right away, bum, 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 you have some things filled out already kind of templated. And you can see, oh, here's about the course. And it says, briefly describe your course highlights. So I can go in here and I can go, whoop, I cut this out, my course name. I can say, I teach, you know, uh, Psych 101, blah, 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 blah. And then I can exit it, save it right? And bingo, I have now created a web page that's in my portfolio that I can then share and I can make it public. I can do lots of other things. Um, I can do collaborative work with people, make it public, catalog in Merlot, make copies, add analytics. There's a whole lot of things that I can do this. And, and Barb Beats Burling knows all about how to use this, but just want to make sure this is, this is part of your kitchen part of your open educational services that are available for you. So, so if people want to create some homegrown ingredients, this is a simple tool to get started for remixing open education resources. You can then redistribute it, you retain it on your own, reuse it, all those things that are possible there. So I'll stop there on the, on the demo. Uh, just to help, hopefully you get a, a sense of some of those tools. And in the last few minutes, I just want to show a few things about another whole res resource that you have. So, um, Aaron, you want to just pop back uh, the the, um, the PowerPoint? I think Aaron had to leave to go to an appointment, but let me oh. see. I have it on my screen, so let me pull it up. Oh, okay. Well, I did have it somewhere. Hang on. Keep uh, Keep talking. Okay, so what I'm going to talk to you next about, there's an, so Merlot is a referatory pointing to stuff. There's another whole collection that we have. It's called skillscommons.org is the repository. And this was a U.S. Department of Labor project um, began in, excuse me, 2010, where they started investing $1.9 billion, that's billion, in lower division workforce development and, uh, and general education courses, all right? And so one of the things um, that um, that's there is, and, and what the Department of, and one of the things, the requirement of all this work being done is that all, all the materials created by the community colleges had to be openly licensed, okay? So now those resources, and these are all downloadable files, PowerPoints, they are uh, Word documents, PDFs, but they're also full course packages um, that have been zipped up that, that you can um, move into your canvas, things along those lines. So, um, and if you can go back one slide, um, Leslie. So this is the website, Skills Commons. 
all available, freely, freely available. So hit, hit, hit the next. So and then uh, next slide. That's the tax program that that was funded. So over eight years. And to highlight all these materials, one of the things that our students are looking for is a pathway to employment. Why is education so important? It actually develops those skills in order for you to get those sustainable living, you know, income jobs. So all these materials that have been created through the TAC program also had an industry partner. They were evaluated by subject matter experts. So the issue around the quality was to make sure quality was built into it. And then all these folks, these seven people from 700 community colleges around the US had to upload it into skills comments. So next slide. Now, one of the things that we created as part of this, our grant for the US Department of Labor and Rick Lumadus, who's on the slot, is on the call here. We created a OER course too as well. So if you wanna know a lot of background on that, here's, and you'll have the, 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 uh, the PowerPoint here. And so next slide, I'm gonna quickly go through kind of what's in this course that's available. So here is finding, reusing, revising, remixing, open education resources. That's you know the, the home page. And they're thinking about these lessons. It's a it's written in soft chalk, so it's really easy uh, to learn to use this. Okay, uh, next hit the next one. So what's in here is background of what the heck are open education resources. Next slide is around how do you find it, and you might guess we're a little biased about using Merlot. Next, All right. And then we give you examples about how to revise, remix, uh, retain, redistribute open education resources. So next button. So we talk about the five R's. So this is open, available for you to use this because um, sometimes, you know, I, and I've been doing this, you know, Merlot started in 97. So that's 26 years. And I still get people saying, What's OER and what? How do I do this? So to help them learn, here's a easy to use, free, open uh, course uh, for learning and sharing about OER. Um, next slide. Oh, okay. Um, if I do, I have one more minute. Oh no, I don't. Um, there's there's just the content that's in there. There's healthcare in there. There's engineering in there, there's agriculture in there, um, there's IT, uh, there's lots of information that's more focused toward workforce development. And again, I'll just highlight what's important about it is that these are files you can download, reuse, revise, and remix, uh, and, and, and help use address uh, employment-related content.